Here's the scenario. You're on a trip to some remote destination and your vehicle gets stuck or breaks down. Now you've got to ask yourself two questions. One, how long is it going to take that recovery vehicle to get to me? And two, can I survive from just my vehicle for that long? And this can be particularly difficult, especially in areas where natural resources are really hard to come by. And how well you prepared for just such a scenario as this is going to determine whether or not you make it home. So here are some things that you can do to survive from just your vehicle for long enough to see that rescue party. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. Don't spare a vehicle that is not in running order at the expense of your life. If you need to harvest things from the vehicle, particularly if you know that it's not going to be in running condition again, then harvest from it what you can. Now before I go any further, I just want to give a special thanks to the guys at R&D Offroad for spotting me some of the extras for this video. In survival, water is not usually our first priority, but it is usually one of the questions that come up first. How do I get water from a vehicle? In the case of seawater, we can actually desalinate it using a jerry can. So this is one of my front runner jerry cans. So I've got a spout, I remove the plastic melty parts, and then just some tubing. This is exactly the same tubing um, that sits on my water tanks. So this is seawater. Just gonna plumb that in there. Gonna use a lemon from last night, just to make sure that we actually manage to seal this off. So we're just going to seal that as best as we can. Now this end of the pipe can go straight into one of my water tanks and the jerry can in itself just goes on the fire. In order to make this system more efficient in the condensation part of it, I can run it through cold water. So if I were to cool this tank down, it would actually encourage condensation. So it's taken about 20 minutes, but I now have steam. And just a word of caution, steam burns are really severe. So just be careful when you do this. If I put it in a glass bottle, you can see how quickly that fogs up and it'll get quite hot as well. And then all of that moisture that's generated there is perfectly safe to drink. Um, another thing to note, this is actually a pressurized system. So try to ensure that there is an outlet of some sort. Um, don't seal the whole system off. Stay there. So if you don't have access to water at all, let's say there's no seawater around and there's no dam water and there's not even something brackish, you can harvest some water from your vehicle. Right. Question number one, can you drink radiator water? The answer is no. Unfortunately not. The coolant in there is poisonous. However, if you're really desperate, you can actually drink the windscreen wiper water. So this is where we get back to how long do you think you're going to need to survive in that environment? Because the soap in the windscreen wiper water might make you a little ill. Um, there may be some benefit to drinking it anyway. You can try and distill it in the same way that I desalinated the seawater. But this is also where preparedness comes into play. So if you know that you're going on a trip where you might get stuck somewhere um, and it might actually be that you are short of water, don't put soap in the windscreen wiper water. So quick and easy, just detach the windscreen wipers. And there's quite a couple liters of water in the windscreen wipers water. Don't let the alarm go off. And then just depress the windscreen wipers. If I can find it, there we go. There are a couple of ways that you can filter and it will take some of the soap out as well. Um, so let's get into filtering water. Well, now you're not going to see because now you're in the you're in the camera now. <laughs> That's brilliant. Can't see anything. <laughs> this is actually my car's old air filter that R&D Offroad kept for me. Um, so I've put some charcoal in the middle there, so that would help to adsorb um, bacteria and viruses and protozoa. Now, car air filters are usually two to five micron filters. 
Um, whereas the Sawyer Mini and the Lifestore 0.2 or 0.1 micron, so you're not going to filter out all the viral particles and bacteria from here. But it's going to still give you a better chance at surviving if there is something in the water that you don't want in there. Now I've got a nice dirty mixture of water in here. So this water will have been filtered to at least two to five microns and the charcoal will definitely help as well. So it's still gonna be safer to drink it after having filtered it, but the gold standard is still to be able to boil your water. A rolling boil of a minute gives you safe drinkable water. Now that's all good and well, but what if you don't have the means to make a fire? Either you can't start the fire or you don't have the firewood for it. It's not ideal to burn a spare tire um, because it is a pollutant, it's really bad for the environment. But if you have no other means to stay warm, because thermoregulation is one of our priorities in survival, we need to be able to maintain our core body temperature. We also need to be able to cook food and we need to be able to boil water. You would need to prevent the fumes from the tire getting into the food. And you can cook food anaerobically. Something like a cake tin will work and then you can cook your food inside the sealed tin on the fire. And if these skills as well as preparedness is something that you're interested interested in learning, I do run survival preparedness courses. You can mail me at info at liveready.co.za to book a course. Right, so let's make a fire. Camp here and make up. <laughs> Connect your vehicle jumper cables to the battery, as you usually would to jump start another vehicle. So to get this going, best is to use some steel wool. So I'm gonna clamp it onto that side. And then of course you've got to have something combustible on hand that will actually burn properly. So if you're going to burn a tire, the base is actually to use a little bit of fuel. So if you've got some jerry cans on your vehicle, um, you can do that. If I do this right, it happens quite quickly. By the way, this is not particularly good for your vehicle battery. There we go. And we've got fire. Oh, as long as it actually gets going. Don't set the bush on fire. And then of course take all the steel wool out. Um, and this is actually still burning. There's actually still an ember in there. Now there are a lot of other things that we can use and harvest from our vehicle. Our gear plays a big role as well. But probably the biggest role player is going to be mentality. Lots of people die in the wilderness with a water bottle with them just because they don't have the mental fortitude in order to manage that situation. And the Bible gives us a great example in Jeremiah 29 11 where it says, For I know the plans I have for you, for hope and a future, to prosper you. And you should really hang on to that hope for a future because it's going to get you so much further than just the gear or the skills is going to. Getting back to harvesting gear, for example, the fly sheet poles from your rooftop tent if you've got one or anything else in the vehicle can be quite springy so these can be used to set up a spring snare trap you basically substitute the sapling that you would use in a spring snare trap with the pole from your rooftop tent the fly sheet can also be used to harvest water and so can your shower curtain because they're waterproof, it means they can also contain water. So you can use those items in order to collect water, whether that be dew that you mop up with a shirt or a buff or a scarf or something like that. Um, or it just be that you catch rainwater in them or you collect the runoff from your fly sheet or from your shower curtain. In the absolute worst case scenario, if you are in a castaway situation where you really need to get off some deserted island you can actually use your gear to build a raft as well well I wouldn't recommend that you abandon your vehicle at any point it may be that you have zero resources left in there and the environment that you're in may not be conducive to surviving there long term so if you do need to get yourself off a deserted island or you just need to make a raft to float down river to see if you can find a village or a town somewhere down river you can use some of the gear from your vehicle in order to do that so i've just used my ammo crate the wolf pack pros i now call it a wolf raft now if you don't have that much rope you can harvest the seat belts from your vehicle um, you can harvest something like cargo netting any of that stuff can be used to build a raft or to make cordage from um, so i need to now pull this whole thing down to the ocean if you've liked this video and you found value here remember to hit like and subscribe follow me on social media i post a bit more of the everyday live ready stuff on instagram and until the next time live ready